Okay, so now we're going to actually get into the use of flow design. Um, and I'm going to use um, my STL file. Um, since I prefer those better. Uh, that will type better. So when you first come in, um, you see the breakdown, um, kind of like the layout that flow design has. You have your simulation. Um, here you won't be able to see it as much, and you'll be able to see it a little bit. And this is basically just how stuff flows. You'll see it more in the 3D. And then um, display, we can um, switch be, you know, either metric or English. Model dimensions, um, switch to feet. I'll do that. Wind tunnel. Um, so this is the actual wind speed of it. And now that we switch to the, I switch to the English units, it's in feet per second. Um, obviously, uh, wind comes in. My, most wind dimensions are in miles per hour, or wind speeds, I should say, are in miles per hour. Um, and feet per second is not what you want, and it's going to be hard you know, to actually tell what the wind speed is from there. Um, easiest fix to that is just go to Google and do miles um, per hour to feet per second. And then you can say you know, 10 is probably an average speed. So you can say foot per second is, say, 15. So we can say this is 15. And click OK. Um, so orientation is another big one um, that you're going to have to look at. And that is because uh, and I showed you the, in the first video how the FBAX file comes in sideways and you can rotate it um, to, you know, to be flat and, you know, so it aligns with the top views and stuff like this. Um, but the other reason you're going to need the orientation tab is because, as you can see, um, obviously when your building comes in, it comes in as, you know, as it does, however it imports in. But obviously the wind's coming from a certain direction, you know, either, um, you know, south or north or northeast, southeast, however it's coming. Um, but the pro this program, it's basically a wind tunnel. So wind flows from this point in this direction, and you can start to see, you can start to see this moving a little bit. If you zoom in, you can actually see it flowing. Um, you'll see it better once I switch to flow lines um, to give you a better idea how it's flowing um, but so it comes from a certain direction and since this is a wind tunnel it's just coming from the straight direction now, I don't know if you guys have ever seen uh, a real-life wind tunnel but they have full-size wind tunnels that are used to test stuff like cars and their performance or airplanes and their performance um, they have like a, a small-scale wind tunnels that are actually used to test um, architectural building models Something, um, those are going to be more for um, stuff like high-rise uh, skyscrapers and because obviously your wind and your vortexes um, increase the higher you go. So they actually, um, sometimes they will actually create, you know, a scaled size model at a big enough scale. Um, obviously not too big, probably around like a quarter inch or a half inch depending, um, you know, depending on what they need, and then they'll put that into the wind tunnel to test, you know, the wind effects and how it would have on the building to see if the structures um, sound. And then you have wind tunnels like this that are computer generated. So what you got to do is you got to figure out. And I'm gonna first. I'm gonna move this to all the way back um, so I can start to see everything. So I can see my. So you, what you got to do is is you got to orientate your model to where the wind's coming from so it matches up with the wind tunnel and what I mean by that is we know, so looking at our building if I go to a top view so this is basically the layout that was in, in Revit and this is a kind of a good way to start where you know look at however you have your site plans in Revit and however you have your north you know your north axis laid out so I know you know basically in this one straight up is north so if I look here, so this one straight up is north, and say I have the wind coming from the east, you know, and obviously this may not be the case, um, 
you know, obviously use whatever you guys found in your site analysis for prevailing winds. Let's say the, the site is coming from the east, so that would be coming from this direction. Basically, I have to rotate my model 90, uh, 180 degrees, and that would be Z. And sometimes you're going to have to play with this to see which one is actually the right axis. You know, you would think it would be X or Y to rotate this, you know, this 180 since it's flat, but it ends up being the Z axis that you have to rotate 180, you know, to get that to flow from the east. So now you have a wind that's directly thrown from the east. Obviously, if it was like, you know, southeast, you know, it wouldn't be exactly 180, maybe it's something like that. So now you have the wind kind of flowing at like a, a you know, you know, like a northeast or a southeast direction, and then you can start to analyze it from there. I'm going to leave it at that orientation for now. Um, and then, so this is kind of the tunnels. If you hover over at the simulation mode, so right now we're in 2D. Um, leave that there for now. And then velocity, so this basically controls what the data is giving you. Um, so you can see this is basically showing what the wind speeds are in you know in the model and how they're being you know how they're flowing around the buildings and stuff. So if I switch to pressure, it'll start to show the pressure that's being created from the wind. This is something that's good you know for high rise buildings where you can start to tell the pressure that's going to be on the facade that's going to be created from the wind. For us, it's probably not going to be too big of a deal, um, but obviously you can start to look at it. Just you, know, you may have some objects in your building that could be affected by wind speeds um, and the pressure or negative pressure that's being created by them. Um, so that's something that you would want to look at. Or you may have certain, um, maybe like courtyards or something like that, where you want to you want to see what the type of pressure is going to be created in that courtyard from surrounding. You know, if you had two or three buildings as part of your site, and you want to see what kind of pressure is going on, um, you know, within between your buildings, you can do that as well. Um, for now, I'm going to leave it as velocity. Drag plot just kind of gives you a plot um, of what it's going through. You know, I'm not really too familiar with this, so I'm not going to try to explain it. You can look into it more, or you know, um, see if anybody else, uh, one of the professors, know. What this will show. So the plane. Let me turn on drag plot. So the plane, um, <clears throat> the plane uh, kind of tool is basically this thing. This big plane right here. And when you're in 2D, you have the option between plane or flow lines. And you can see I switched to flow lines, and you can barely kind of see them. And that is because of the, the settings, which is the very next tab. And so for settings, for the flow lines, I can increase the count so you see more of them. I can increase the speed so they go faster. Now this doesn't affect wind speed because you can see the colors respond to wind speed here. And if I change, you know, how s slow they're actually moving, it doesn't affect the actual regions. This is just so you can start to see it easier, where you can increase the speed and you can start to see the flow better. Or if you want to slow it down, um, so you can actually get numbers from the colors. Um, the size is how big they, the lines actually are, so you can really increase the size or you can make it really small. And then the length, um, you can increase, you know, that's how long the actual lines are. So now since we're in 2D, what you can do is you can basically drag this plane using this kind of dot thing. And this moves the plane or the flow lines, you know, over to match your, you know, wherever the different areas that you want to look at. Let me switch this back to plane for a second. So you can see here, I can start to, you know, this, I can start to move the plane to different areas. That's the site. So my building is that right there.
And sometimes it can be a pain to actually grab the slider. So on the plane, you can see, you know, the different values of the wind and what they're at and how it's going around. And then when you set the plane, you can switch over to a flow line to start to see how the lines are flowing um, just in that plane alone. And then I showed you what this, this side setting does. Um, this kind of, this is the light in model, so it kind of just turns light on or off. Um, obviously, the light on kind of makes, you know, the, the readout colors a little bit better. Um, this is, you can change the color of your, the actual data itself. So if you don't like the blue to red, you can switch it to some, you know, different color outputs. If you want it to be a grayscale, it can be a grayscale. Uh, you know, however you want. I like to leave it at that. Personal preference. You know, whatever you like to size it as. And then use your interface if it's light or if it's dark. Um, that's obviously the background, how you like the background to be. Um, if the buildings are coming in gray, probably preference to go with the light colored one. And then the last button is basically kind of just what's visible. Um, so your view cube is this, and then obviously all the different information here that you can tell. Um, you can go through here, and then this, um, if you kind of see this plus sign, you can move this to different spots on the map. And this kind of just gives you the output of how big the actual model is, its height, um, the current wind speed that you're testing at, which again was set up, you know, from here, um, and then the status of it, you know, if it's transient or not, and then, you know, that's all set up by the setting. I'm going to push this back up now, get it on top. Um, so that's how you would run a um, simulation, a wind simulation in 2D for your building, where you can drag a simple plane, turn into flow lines, um, adjust the settings of the flow lines. Let me be smaller for a second. Adjust the settings of, so, so you can start to kind of gauge a specific point on the map, um, you know, on the area to kind of test your building out if you wanted to. Um, so you can see here with this building, you know, this building, you know, if this is the actual correct height in this plane, it's allowing the wind to go up on it, and most of it's being shot over the building that I put in, so it's kind of blocking the wind from actually meeting, you know, you know getting to mind. You can see there's some kind of like stagnant ones down there. Um, but in the third part of the video of this tutorial, I will show you um, what it's like when you switch over to 3D.